Hi guys, Stas here. Today we're going to be talking about how to make a malt tea for some colour analysis as well as to get an idea of how your beer is going to taste pre-fermentation. So today, as I said, we're going to be talking about how to make a malt tea. Now this malt tea, there's a couple of different ways to do it. Um, we're starting with a fairly simple method today. It's used by uh, Gladfield in their, in their testings and uh, it's something that you can do at home uh, fairly easily. You need a small amount of equipment. You need 800 ml of water at 70 degrees. You need a funnel, some filter paper, 100 grams of malt, uh, a coffee grinder or a way to um, smash up those grains. You can put them in a Ziploc bag and beat them in the rolling pin as well, that'll work. And a vessel, let's see how it works. First of all, you formulate your grist or grain bill. You can do this with pen and paper, uh, or you can use uh, some software such as Beersmith, or there are uh, a number of other ones available as well. Um, put in your ingredients and look at the percentage that each grain contributes to your overall grain bill. Then we're gonna take a 100 gram grain bill and divide that up by the same percentages. We're just gonna scale back this grain bill. Um, so we're only making a small amount of wort. Wort, wort, same thing. So we weigh it all out, a total of 100 grams, put it into your coffee grinder or uh, a rolling pin, with plastic, uh, plastic bag with a rolling pin, and you wanna pulverize that to a coarse flour consistency. Then we'll put it into our filter paper, which is in our funnel sitting on top of a, a vessel to collect the wort as it comes through the grains. And we're gonna gently pour over the 800 ml of 70 degree water. You may have to do this in a couple of steps depending on how big your funnel and filter paper is. Then we're gonna let that drain through and let it cool. And you should have some really, a uh, pretty accurate uh, indication of what color this is. Um, now this is something I prepared yesterday, uh, so I'll overlay some uh, pictures of the actual colour. Um, so this has got a really nice deep red uh, hue, whereas this one is, you can't really see through it at all. Um, it's definitely black. So I've got two different grists here. This one is a typical red ale, and this one is a typical oatmeal stout minus the lactose, of course. Uh, let's have a quick look at the grist of both of these. The red ale, we've got 90% ale malt, traditional ale malt, 9% uh, light crystal, and 1% roasted barley. So this is, this is just a, a typical red ale. For the oatmeal stout, we've got 75% traditional ale, 7% oats, 4% roasted wheat, and 6% roasted barley. Of course, we've got 8% lactose as well. We're not gonna add that in for this test as it doesn't really add much in the way of color. However, it will uh, leave your beer tasting a little bit sweet because lactose is a non-fermentable sugar. The other interesting thing that is probably worth pointing out is, as you can see, the difference between a red ale and an oatmeal stout in terms of the relative percentage of base grains versus specialty malts is not that big a difference. A lot of people think that dark beers require a lot of dark malts. And while it's true, the dark malts is where the, the, the color of the stout comes from, you use a very small percentage of your grist or grain bill. So yeah, I just thought it might be useful to visually see that the base malt is still doing the heavy lifting in terms of forming the base of, of your uh, grist. Uh, so let's give these uh, a quick taste as well. Uh, well. We'll start with the red ale. So I'm getting a nice sort of bready character <coughs> from uh, the traditional ale, ale malt. Obviously this is gonna be sweet and your beer post fermentation is not gonna taste like this. Uh, just like a chef would sort of understand all of the uh, ingredients, both raw, pre-cooking and by themselves, they also become familiar with the different combinations of flavors and what happens to an, ingre an ingredient before it's cooked, after, after it's cooked. 
you, as a brewer, the, the more you brew, you kind of get a, an idea of um, how the wort, as in before you add the yeast, uh, turns into beer after you add the yeast and post fermentation, there can be some changes in, uh, in flavor as well. So I'm not getting much roast at all. Or I, I, I don't really taste any roast. I get a little bit of a, a, a sort of a caramelly, raisiny aroma and flavor from that dark crystal malt. But yeah, let's go on to the stout. Now, of course, this is lacking the lactose, so. But I am getting that coffee, roasty aromas coming through. <clears throat> I'm getting a bit more, definitely coffee, a little bit of the roasted astringency coming through. Um, still getting, as it is, you can still taste the base malt um, being the same between the two. But, you know, this has got a lot more going on around it. This one's a pretty much more straightforward malt pill than this one. So yeah, this is a, just a quick and easy thing to do if you're trying to get a color just right or you just want to experiment with a grain bill rather than have to go through a whole brew day uh, to then come out with something that's not quite what you want. Um, this is just a fun little way to uh, experiment. You could either do different styles or you could have different tweaks of the same uh, grain bill with it with a couple of differences. This is really good for dialing in the right amount of uh, red on a red ale, for example. Um, but yeah, I thought this might be a fun thing to show you guys. Coming up soon, I'll be looking at a different hot steep method. This is the Brees ABSC uh, collaboration to come up with their way of doing accurate sensory analysis for different malts. Now this is rather than looking at the grist, um, the total grist, we're going to be looking at specific malts and being able to distinguish either between the different base malts and what their flavor contributions are, but as well as the same type of malt, maybe Marisota or something from different maltsters. So I'm going to be doing a deep dive into malt coming soon. So stick around for that in a future video. So thanks for watching this video on how to make a malt tea for f uh, color and f flavor and aroma analysis. If you liked or disliked it, let us know using the buttons down below. And if you have any questions, comments, or feedback, feel free to let us know in the description as well. Big thanks to Beerco for sponsoring this video. If you head onto their store, link below, and use the coupon code T when you're checking out your order, you will receive 10% off everything in store on a one-time purchase. So until next time, this has been Stas on behalf of Beerco signing off. I'm gonna have a malt tea. Cheers.